So now we talk money matters. And last Saturday, Leslie McCormick of Tharwell Wealth Management Team stepped in and pointed out that making a decision to sell your home and move is not just black and white, hire a realtor, sell, take your money and spend. It involves several factors, including that piece about the money that is really important. She offered to speak to any of us who are considering a move and pointed out possible pitfalls and offers advice. She definitely opened my ideas to the necessity of learning from a knowledgeable, experienced financial advisor when you're selling your home. In fact, before you sell your home, before you take action, it's what Darren uh, Farewell always talks about and his team advocates, is you don't know what you don't know. So learn it first, then take ex- take your steps forward. So Darren, having heard that, I'm wondering what you're going to talk about today. Well, today I've got a, a, a happy story about someone who was looking for an answer to a question, and I was able to provide that for him. Uh, Before I go to that, though, I have to admit this morning I was very happy that I had a heating steering wheel. (laughs) It's really cold out there today. You have a gorgeous car. Uh, Very tastefully selected. Uh, Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, My happy story today, as I said, about someone who was coming in with a question. And he mentioned at the end of our, our talk that he sort of had that aha moment that you get when you have a question and you're wondering about something and you get an explanation that really makes sense and you walk away feeling, wow, that's good. Uh, I really feel, having talked about it, that I know uh, the answer to my question. Ryan was in this week and he had a question about life insurance. Apparently, Ryan had been talking to his neighbor and his neighbor said that he was, him and his wife were arranging some medicals for life insurance. Now, the the conversation quickly shifted and Ryan and his neighbor really didn't get to talk about why his neighbor was getting life insurance. So it left Ryan with this question about why would this very well-to-do neighbor who doesn't have any debt, doesn't have any children he's supporting, why would he be getting life insurance? So during our annual review meeting on Wednesday, Ryan asked me, Now, it turns out that's a question I get quite regularly, so I was ready to answer when Ryan asked me the question. In my professional opinion, there are five reasons to buy life insurance. Number one, the traditional one, it's a risk. It's insurance is a protection against the risk of something going wrong. Secondly, insurance is a makes a available very quickly money to pay to pay the taxes that an estate might owe so it's a quick way of getting money for an est- for taxes an estate will owe thirdly insurance can be very effective as a tax smart investment an investment for your beneficiaries or an investment for your own retirement and number 5 insurance can be an effective way to make charitable and philanthropic giving At the end of the day, really, insurance is just a product. You buy insurance if it most effectively meets an objective or a goal you have. So to answer Ryan's question about why his neighbor might have been buying life insurance at this stage in his life, I went through the five reasons with him. So I thought I'd do the same this morning and perhaps answer some listeners' questions about life insurance and some of the reasons why they might want to have some. So one by one? One by one. So protection against risk. Protection against risk. So the classic one is protection against risk. And many of us have life insurance at that stage in our, for example, when you have a home with a mortgage, particularly if you have a family, and if something was to happen to one of the breadwinners, then how is that mortgage payment going to get covered? How are we going to cover the children's costs? If something happens to a breadwinner and that money is no longer coming in, insurance provides a means of offsetting that loss. So that's the classic reason for risk. Now, most likely that's not the case for the wealthy neighbor because he doesn't have any debt and doesn't have any children, so he's not likely looking after that risk reason. Number two, minimum estate legacy. A number of people that I talk to when they're thinking about retirement and thinking about the what legacy they'll leave have an idea in mind. For example, I have a client who has two children who said, I want to be sure each of them has $500,000. My wife and I are going to spend all of our money 
while we're alive, but to not worry about what will happen with the kids, we want to make sure they have a five hundred thousand dollar policy. Nice, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, a minimum legacy is a reason for getting insurance. So you'll know for sure that your beneficiaries have a specific amount of insurance, even if you end up spending it all. Thirdly, to pay the estate taxes. A common example of that, especially here in Ontario, where cottage prices have gone up so much, is when a family has a family cottage, and I know people whose parents and got their cottage inherited from their grandparents, and the book value of the cottage is four hundred thousand dollars, but it's currently worth one point five million. How nice! Yes, I don't have one of those right now. <laughs> but what that means is, on death of the second parent, that there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of tax owed. There could be five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars worth of taxes owed, and the tax is going to be owed right away. The children might not want to sell the cottage, but unless they can somehow come up with five or six hundred thousand dollars to pay the taxes, they're going to have to. So one strategy is to buy life insurance that would offset that tax bill when the time comes. So it's a quick and easy way to cover the taxes that an estate might owe. Insurance can also be a very tax smart investment. So number four is insurance as an investment, and there's kind of two types of investment there. There are investments for your beneficiaries. There are people who are quite sure that they're not going to spend all of their money in their lifetime. That is, there will be a legacy, and with the money that they're investing in their lifetime, they don't want all of it invested in stocks. They'd like some money in guaranteed investments. Well, when you compare the rate of return, the internal rate of return, on a life insurance policy where everything grows tax-free and ultimately is paid out tax-free, compared to a portfolio of GICs and bonds, it's far better. So, as a tax-smart investment that will be passed on to your beneficiaries, life insurance can be very powerful. Secondly. Life insurance can also be good investment for some people in their lifetime if you start early enough. If you were to start, for example, in your early fifties, to say mid fifties, and bought a life insurance policy, you could then borrow against that policy in retirement to provide a very tax smart retirement income. So, two ways in which insurance makes a very smart investment. Finally, and again, this was in no particular order. Insurance can be very useful for making charitable or philanthropic giving. Number one, you can take a relatively smaller amount of money and make a significant contribution by leaving it to a charity or some cause that's important to you. Because of the tax deductibility of some of these strategies, leaving money to a charity or another cause can Be helpful from an estate perspective. So, on death, you can deduct the amount that was paid for insurance, so that reduces the amount of tax paid by the estate. You can even deduct premiums today if it's if you're leaving money for through a cause or some other charitable giving. So, insurance has lots of different ways and uses. And at the end of the conversation. Ryan said to me, and that's why it was a happy story. That he was really satisfied that he got a good picture of all the different reasons why insurance might be useful, and he really felt satisfied that he could think through these different alternatives and talking about it with his neighbor. Well, I know you leave after your segment, so you never hear us refer back to you don't know what you don't know. But it's resonating through the show because my team and yourself educate people. These five reasons to buy insurance, I guess, vary from pocketbook and person to person. If someone wants to talk to you about insurance or maybe have a review of their portfolio, are you going to work today? I'm, I'm certainly not doing any outside activities today, so going right back to the so office. So it's safe to give out your number if you wish to speak to Darren. I'm an immediate. Gratification person. So, if you want to speak to him today rather than wait till Monday, his number is four one six eight six three seven five zero one. That's four one six eight six three 
7501. It never hurts to have a fresh perspective on your finances. And I've learned as I listen to Darren week to week that it makes a difference. You definitely don't know what you don't know. And what's easy and simple for he for himself and his team is very complicated for me. And I'm a businesswoman, so I'm sure it's complicated for others. So to uncomplicate the world of finance and understand what you're doing and have a GPS that will take you where you want to go for your retirement. Do call Darren, have the conversation, and see where it takes you. That's 416-863-7501. Thanks, Darren. I look forward to learning more next week. Nice to be here, Marilyn. Always a pleasure. I always learn something. I'm amazed at how much you know.